have aerodynamics, you probably know the four main forces exerted to an airplane. The thrust generated by the engine, the weight caused by gravitation, lift and drag produced by pressure difference and frictional effects. In this video, we'll specifically discuss how lift and drag affect the motion of a plane. First of all, we highly recommend you to watch our previous video about the thrust generated by the jet engine. As you all know, a force may be thought of as a push or pull in a specific direction. So while the plane is being pushed upward by the lift, gravity resists. Thus, lift has to overcome the weight power. This makes the airplane fly. The same thing happens with the thrust. As the plane is moving forward, an opposing force called drag attempts to decelerate the motion. The magnitude of lift and drag depends on several factors including the shape, size and velocity of the aircraft. In fact, when air flows around a solid object like an airfoil, pressure and shear stresses appear on its surface which may result in lift and drag. The resultant force in the direction of the oncoming airflow is known as drag and the resultant force perpendicular to the flow is termed the lift. According to Newton's laws of motion, when the amount of pressure below an object is much larger than the amount above, an upward force is generated due to this pressure difference. That's what air folds are designed for. They produce a non-symmetrical flow field that leads to low pressure at the top which is itself the result of flow separation. In addition, altering Air Force angle of attack and curvature permits us to control the flying height. For instance, increasing the angle of attack up to the critical point will give us more lift, but once the angle of attack exceeds its critical value, lift begins to decrease. In other words, a larger angle of attack causes a wider vague region and more intensive flow separation. The asymmetry of airfoils is another effective parameter in creating pressure difference. Airfoils with greater curvature produce more lift. Be careful that which cause effects are negligible compared to pressure effects. Therefore, we usually do not consider them in real cases. But what about drag? Similar to the lift, drag is made up of both pressure and shear stress. In some applications and designs like streamlined bodies or airfoils with small angle of attack, the boundary layers on the top and bottom surface experience only mild pressure gradients, and they remain attached along the curved length. The wake is very small and the drag is dominated by viscous friction inside the boundary layers. However, in blunt bodies and airfoils with higher angle of attack, the pressure gradients increase in magnitude. In this case, the pressure drag is much greater. The drag might be beneficial or disadvantages depending on whether the plane is landing or taking off. During takeoff, thrust must counteract drag and lift must counteract the weight. Thus, obviously drag isn't advantages in this case. However, it is impossible to completely eliminate drag. On the other hand, increasing the drag during landing can be useful since it prevents the plane from getting highly accelerated and it lowers the landing distance. This was a short summary about the mechanism of airplanes. Hope you have enjoyed watching this video and as always don't forget to subscribe.